Goedenavond en welkom iedereen. Vandaag zijn we te gast bij uh, Telenet in Mechelen. En het minste wat we kunnen zeggen is dat eigenlijk iedereen hen diep in de ogen probeert te kijken en te ontdekken waar ze mee bezig zijn. Voor iedereen zijn ze sowieso bekend als een belangrijke telecomspeler in België. Maar toch uh, zijn ze steeds prominenter aanwezig uh, in de media. Uh, en daar gaan we het natuurlijk straks ook over hebben. Uh, maar toch, uh, ze staan in hun aanpak steeds uh, stil bij het uh, feit dat je toch in dialoog moet gaan met de medewerkers, met de klanten en alle stakeholders in feite. Want um, onderwerpen als duurzaamheid, uh, engagement en purpose zijn geen lege begrippen voor hen. Sinds 2013 staat John Porter aan het hoofd van dit bedrijf, dynamisch bedrijf. And therefore, welcome, John. Thank you that uh, you took the time to uh, invite us and use your premises here in, Mel in Mechelen. No, it's my pleasure and uh, very honored to uh, have this opportunity to speak to you, your membership and uh, very excited to have a nice conversation. Thank you. Well, anyway, it goes without saying that uh, this chat will be very inspiring to us and uh, we hope you will enjoy this get-together as much as we will. Absolutely. After the introduction of uh, Geert de Gezelle, who is member of uh, the board of ADM, we will come back to you with plenty of questions, John. Um, Geert, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Marina. Um, actually, it's an honor to be here. Um, I'm a fresh RDM member since a couple of months now. Uh, I'm looking forward to the board next week, but let me just introduce myself. I recently joined Telnet as a VP Sales. I'm actually in telecom for more like 20 years, uh, ICT Telecom, and I was actually lucky to be also um, a member of the Telindus team back then uh, with Jan de Schepper, etc. So that was a, a great experience. Um, let me just introduce Telenet. I'm not sure whether we really need an introduction on Telenet, but just some highlights. Eh? Of course, we are leading telecom and entertainment uh, service provider in Belgium. We are actually um, build out a huge um, giga speed network. Eh? In, in Europe, it's really a premier and uh, 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 to, today it's already uh, available. So that's great. What we focus on in the res residential market is fixed and mobile um, connectivity combined with entertainment in the business side we actually have converged, full converged solutions, so like telecom and ICT. Um, some numbers, we have 2.5 billion revenue eh, on an annual basis. We have more, ab about 3,500 uh, FTEs. And of course, the culture is very important to us. Eh? So we have really focused on that uh, aspect, on an open, authentic and, and really dynamic culture. But of course, John will elaborate on that one much more. Um, if you look at the, the culture, the diversity is very important, but also the fact that um, if you look at the digital inclusion is also very important to us. So we are actually partnering in the Telnet Academy uh, with uh, B Code, with uh, Code Dojo, of course, as a, as a founding member. So that's very important to us. Uh, next to that, of course, if you look at uh, Telnet Business, we have actually in total, eh, we're focusing on Soho, SME and also large enterprises. We have uh, about 300,000 customers in total, eh, of course, the, the obvious part in Soho. And if you look at the propositions that we sell is really um, four pillars, uh, mo main pillars, what's, which is connectivity, which is protect. So everything regarding cybersecurity and physical protection. Third, communicate and collaborate and fourthly uh, hospitality for hospitals for elderly homes for uh, ho hotels etc so that's basically what uh, tenant business is all about and um, today it's an honor to introduce john uh, john is actually joined the talent al already more than eight years ago um, but before joining Telenet, John, uh, John was actually um, the CEO of Allstar, uh, Australian entertainment and telecommunication company. Um, if you look at the track record of John, uh, of course, he was at the inse in the in the inception of Allstar in 95, uh, if mm -hmm. I uh, am informed correctly. Um, starting really the company and then uh, sold in uh, 2012 
to uh, Foxtel. And at that stage, the company was actually covering like one third of the Australian homes. So really an achievement, uh, John. And before you had uh, also some functions in the US. Eh? So you have a combined um, nationality, a global citizen actually, mm -hmm. US and Australian. And I believe you can also speak all the different accents. Eh? That's in right, mate. Yeah, you name it. You got it. You got yeah. it yeah. got all. So that's great. And uh, for the rest, um, I'm really looking forward to work together and uh, and also for the, the session today. Yes. Well, thank you, Kurt. And I just, everyone, this is the first time I've actually seen Kurt in, in, in person. So uh, it's a real pleasure and great to have a, a real seasoned professional like you on board and uh, with our great uh, Telenet business. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you, Geert. And before starting to shoot with uh, the questions, I would like to invite everybody from the audience to join at slide.com, uh, hashtag ADM0106. So, John, um, about the core activities of Telenet, um, because we were already talking about telecoms, entertainment, what are the, 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 the four or the six or the three or the two or the one <laughs> core um, activities of the company? Well, uh, Marina, uh, it seems to change weekly. Uh, we are a company that um, is certainly, um, our, our core business is based on our technology, our network, uh, which is, which 25 years ago we inherited uh, from the, uh, from the municipalities of, uh, of Flanders, and um, it's been onward and upward ever since then. So initially, interestingly, we were just in the business of um, being an alternative uh, telephone provider, uh, and now today, you know, it's, uh, it's very extensive, our core business, of course, on our one gig uh, fixed network, uh, on our mobile network, which is very highly performant. Um, network which we acquired from KPN base in uh, 2015, completely rebuilt. It's now, you know, we're doing sort of 80 to 90 megabits per second downstream on a mobile network. In fact, we're offering a, a, a video and broadband service that sits on our mobile network called Tadam, which is very successful. And um, of course, in our enterprise business, um, you know, 15 years ago, it was, or you know, when when Martin uh, arrived, it was, it was just well, we've got some cable going past your business. Would would you like some connectivity? Uh, and today, post the acquisition of Nextel, um, post a lot of organic development of uh, you know really unique IP focused, next generation focused products. Um, you know, we 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 can tick pretty much all the boxes that um, that the enterprise uh, market requires. And then of course we look at we also look outside of our core at yep. adjacencies and I'm sure we'll talk about that too, yep. you know, uh, when we get to it. Yeah, of course. Um, now, when we compare that with uh, your vision and strategy, I do not want to dig into the, the real overview of your vision and strategy, but uh, the entertainment and the media, mm -hmm. how do you see this? Uh, what, what, what kind of, of definition do you give within your vision uh, to that uh, specific part? Well, we, we talk about connected entertainment or connected experiences. So um, I think Harriet alluded to it. Um, you know, it starts with connectivity. It starts with world class, best in class, um, and frankly, you know, just entre nous, best in Belgium um, connectivity. Uh, it's our fixed networks, one gig, you know, for everyone not just certain people who get a certain kind of service. And as I said, our, our, our wireless network is extremely performant. But it's also um, the experience that people can have with that network. No one's thinking about that network when they turn on their television mm. or when they um, you know, are, are using some of the you know, security services or the, you know, the, uh, the SDN services or the you know, other services that we offer through um, Telenet business. And it's very important that, n not necessarily that we, we own all those, those experiences mm -hmm. that we provide to our network, but that we, in fact, have a big tent and that we, are, we do give people a lot of options that, uh, that w where the vertical services provide added value for people. And, you know, I think that's, that's something that we, we take a lot of pride in. I think we're, 
we're pretty progressive in that regard. Um, you know, last we launched a the beginning of the last 15 months, we we launched a um, security product. You know, five euros a month for uh, for our consumer business. We also have a professional um, uh, security product that's um, that's doing very well. So, so we try to to really leverage these quality networks with a whole range of products. Now, entertainment, we, we, were, we were big, we launched digital TV in 2005. So, you know, we've been big in television for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. But the, we, since I've been here and I came basically from, I have a strong media background, yeah. more so than telco. I'll tell you a little anecdote is when I, when I came here, when I, when I first walked through that door and took a look at the, with this building, I said, oh my God, I'm going to work for a telephone company. Yep. I don't actually ever run a telephone company. But uh, that's why there's a little bit more of a media edge. But yep. listen, it's a good strategy. It's, it's a substantial point of differentiation. And we've moved up the value chain in media to the point where you know, we have more ownership and more control of our destiny with, with products like Play and, mm -hmm. and Streams and, and um, even our production companies, uh, Caviar and Westambis. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're very, very integrated into the, the full uh, television and, and content ecosystem uh, here in Flanders. And we think we have a serious role to play. So. Yeah. Okay, now that brings me to a completely different uh, uh, item because mm -hmm. I want to mix a little bit. Uh, we have a very mixed audience as well. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, technological guys, mm -hmm. but we also have people that are more in, you know, li the people side. So yep. now I'm, I'm digging a little bit deeper in leadership. Mm -hmm. yeah? Leadership um, is what does this mean for you um, as a person? Um, because you can have leadership, of course, in, in your activities. But as a person, what is uh, 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 leadership to you and what is your preferred style you're using? Um, well, first of all, for me, um, you know, one of the first things I, I express to the team here is that for me, culture trumps strategy. Um, you know, I think other people have said it. I didn't make it up, but I believe in it very strongly. Um, I think if you can get um, the right people in the right seats on the bus and you can uh, get the energy flowing in the, in the right direction and you can really get a portfolio of shared values and a structure uh, which works uh, for the whole organization that you can achieve anything you set out to do. Yeah. Um, so I also, um, you know, we have moved this company over the last few years to, I would say, a d more democratic structure. We're not in the, the, the classic sort of military organizational hierarchy where all the big ideas come out of the corner office and then shoot down to the factory and then they kick out you know, nice products and services. Um, we are a scale, agile organization. Um, we, we look for leadership. Uh, it's a much flatter organization, mm -hmm. so you know, it's a lot of organizations are in the classic structure are, can be N minus seven, N minus eight in, of, of this size. We're, we're more like N minus five. Um, and we ask and look for leadership in many, many places. So it's just not people managers. It could be so, uh, centers of excellence, subject mm -hmm. matter experts. It could be somebody who's you know working on the front lines but is particularly passionate about fixing something or yep. about doing something amazing for customers or whatever. So, um, you know, the message in our culture is don't just look for leadership. Um, don't just look up for leadership, you know, look within yourself. And if you have it and you want to express it, you know, go for it. And I think the other thing is, um, you know, the places that I've worked and, and I've obviously working in Australia for 21 years, Australia, it, you know, the, the style there is what you see is what you get. Yep. There is no, you know, defining line between you as a, a working person, you as a private person, you as a, you know, something in between. Um, you know, people are the same wherever. So I think here, use the word authenticity, it's, it's certainly a very uh, important part of, of, uh, of our value system and the way we work and, and work with each other. Mm. And how did you cope then with, with COVID? Uh, th has this changed in, in the way you, uh, 
you 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 behave in the company and, and also of course the members of personnel uh, are they different since uh, covid came covid uh, you know accelerated many many good things there's many many bad things about covid uh, including getting it which uh, which i did so uh, but in in terms of organ the organization um, the culture, the ambition yeah. of the organization uh, in regards to people, we've moved ahead at, you know, 200 kilometers an hour. So I think the real winners in, in this last period where mm -hmm. we quickly shifted to a, a new style of working uh, was really trust and generosity. Yeah. You know, I personally, even I was kind of old school, like, oh, one, one day a week working from home, not sure about that, you know. Now... Um, you know, my I believe that 99% of the people that that work for us are doing everything they can to help us be successful. Whether they're working from the coffee shop, the terrace, their backyard, you know, their lounge room where their kids are hanging on their leg and their you know partners in the background doing his or her job, and you know, I really have huge respect for for the way people have responded and for the level of maturity that, that even, even young people who might be customer service mm. agents who are on the phones, at home, in all kinds of environments, shared houses or whatever, uh, I've been hugely impressed uh, with their capability. So I think, I think what, we, what we owe people in our company as, as leaders and as, as managers in terms of our planning um, and the kind of company we want to be is, is, is a couple of things. One is our our stakeholders, both internally and externally, want us to be a more purposeful and sustainably focused company. Yeah, and we come back to we're that doing later. a lot of work on that. But also, we need to create um, a work, um, an attitude towards work, where um, we hold each other accountable. It's, it's not a rules-based um, mm. sort of organizational. Uh, model. It's because of Agile, and I th I, I've i said, listen, we, we became Agile just in the nick of time in, in regards to this pandemic because mm -hmm. um, squads and tribes and chapters, and you've heard the language, I'm sure, um, they hold each other accountable. And they, they say, you know, hey, you know, hey, Marina, we really needed you at that uh, quarterly business mm -hmm. review or that demo or whatever, and, you know, you weren't there. Mm -hmm. That's a lot stronger than someone from HR you know, sending you a mean email saying you didn't show up. But yeah. so I, I think um, th th because because this company is well uh, supported by by its underlying values, by its focus on culture, it's e the the passion, the hosting that people yeah. have for the for the business. Um, I think we've gotten through this uh, this period well. And that brings me then to um, what you um, uh, came up with earlier, um, the transformation. Because I think from the moment you came, or even just before, or mm -hmm. just after, I don't know, uh, the, this really big transformation project was started. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I wanted to know when, okay, wh why did you do it? Why did you do it at that specific moment? And um, what was it for? I wanted to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> I made everybody else come along with me. So, uh, no, listen, it was, it was quite clear that we were uh, at the classic inflection point. You know, the old what got us from, from there to here isn't going to get us from here to there point. And um, we had ridden on the back of broadband for 10 years. So but I got here in 2013, mm -hmm. beginning of 2013. And from, so from 2003 when you were able to start getting more than one megabit per second mm. uh, over the wires, um, you know, we, we had basically gone from 20% broadband penetration to 90% broadband penetration. Uh, um, and I, I, there's an expression in Australian called Blind Freddy. Blind Freddy could have made money from 2003 to 2013. But it was getting tougher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we had to, we had to very much pick a way forward and um, you know we we had been successful uh, with the launch of our MVNO and with King and Kong so the simplification of mobile which started us believing in and understanding um, 
fixed mobile convergence. And this is something that was a very positive uh, move for both our consumer business and our enterprise mm -hmm. business. And we realized that what we needed to do was, was own a mobile uh, operator. So fortunately, we were able to, to acquire base. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, once we had the, the fixed and mobile converged connectivity uh, experience and um, you know, sort of uh, platform agnostic, data centric, device agnostic, um, you know, real data centric relationship with all of our customers, that's when we went into the, um, to the uh, connected, so what's next? Connected yeah. experiences, connected entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, all of the value added services that we, 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 we were building for our enterprise business and then to accelerate that, we, you know, we stepped up and, and bought, you know, after Tolindus, the next most successful ICT uh, integrator in Flanders which was Nextel. Yep. So, you know, it just sort of exploded. <laughs> we, ha we needed to do it because some of our classic things that, first of all, broadband was maturing, fixed voice was on the way out, um, and television was starting to wobble. I mean, if you looked over at the st in the U.S., you know, the cord shaving and, and the whole direct-to-consumer movement. So there are puts and takes in our business and in order to continue to grow our business, mm -hmm. which we were able to do pretty successfully, mostly on the back of our uh, enterprise business, TB, Hertz business, mm -hmm. um, uh, but also uh, with th through fixed mobile convergence and WeGo and et cetera, we were able to keep it growing um, quite nicely, even though we had some serious headwinds. In mobile, there was massive headwinds in uh, in uh, interconnection, in roaming, some regulated headwinds, some, some uh, competitive headwinds. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was very aggressive competitive environment. Um, but then on the other hand, there were things that we could grow. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, did, we had to transform our business in order to underpin uh, our future growth. I think the thing that Telenet does well is they're ahead of the curve. Telenet, um, and they were doing this long before I got here, so it's, it's not me. It's, it's, it's in the core DNA of this company to mm -hmm. be in the vanguard. You know, some companies like to be fast followers. Forget it. Telenet likes to leave everybody else in the dust. That's, that's, the, that's the DNA of, of, of Telenet. They want to they define the market mm -hmm. and have other people follow. And um, so, you know, we, we were one of the first on, on fixed mobile convergence. We were definitely the first on, on building one gig mm. end to end. Mm. Um, and we I would argue that for a cable challenger to the incumbent, we're also you know one of the first to to get after a lot of the vertical services that um, particularly like security and cloud mm. and edge computing and and, and SDN and mm. these kind of things that are really on the top of everyone's list, IP okay. voice, soft switches, you know. So I think um, while you were doing this transformation, and I think mm -hmm. it, it will continue, uh, I think a company needs to continue to transform a, a little bit heavier at one time and the other time uh, than in a, at a slower pace. But anyway, you need to, to keep on keep an eye on the outside world and then interpret it in, in your company also. Um, but um, the company culture must have changed at the same time then. But about the members of personnel, do you do you know them all? and? And, and do you, but it's, it's uh, 3,500, <laughs> there's a spot. lot I hear. Yeah. Uh, but um, do, do they easily connect with you? Uh, or, or are they at a little what bit distant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The barriers no, are very low huh? yeah. to connect, uh, very low uh, and, and very yeah. open, very transparent and uh, very flat actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the way that uh, I did business for, 30 some odd years before I even got here, you know, I know no other way. Um, and, you know, I think for better or for worse, um, a CEO has responsibility for, for defining, obviously, the company externally, mm -hmm. the values, the, the culture a, a bit, and in, in, in my style externally, I think is, is accessible and, and authentic and relaxed. And, but also, even more importantly, is, is defining it internally. And 
uh, though I don't know everyone, everyone, no one would would not know what I stand for and what you know what the kind of company I want us to be, but but that they want us to be too, because mm. it's a shared, um, yeah, you know, because of these shared values that underpin things. And you know, I've always said um, in any company that I've worked, particularly when working in, in television, I said, guys, it's not thermonuclear war. You know, it's TV, it's broadband, it's you know, talking, you know, if we're not having fun, you know, nobody's going to have fun with, with, with our products. Um, so we try to cre create, you know, a fun atmosphere. Mm. Uh, you know, we want to, we care about not just the quality of the work people are doing for us, but we care about um, the quality of their relationship with the company, the quality of their lives. We try to support people. Um, and how they feel about it. And how they feel yeah. about it. I yeah. mean, it's it's a very <laughs> this this business and these products are so wound up in people's lives. Mm -hmm. There's people are so engaged. I mean, what other product can you think of, in a, you know, other than maybe water, that people are using from the time they wake up to the time they go to sleep? Probably yeah. people should take a break. Um, we recommend that. But you know, what other products or suite of products do people engage with at the levels that they engage with this? Mm -hmm. So it's very important that, that um, we recognize that, we acknowledge that, and we also understand, you know, what that, that impact uh, can be on our people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a very, a lot of responsibility uh, given that, and we really have to, you know, cl turn the classic pyramid upside down or level, level the playing field to give our people the, the support and the affirmation that they need to take on that responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. What I would like to come to now is, um, because I have plenty of questions and I know time is running. Mm. <laughs> and, no problem. And, but we have time, no problem. Um, it's about purpose. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, in fact what I think, and I would like to challenge uh, this with you, and perhaps with you as well here, is that um, you're in a technology business, uh, you are uh, in, in entertainment, but still the purpose is, is how do you use these assets you have? How do you use these um, experiences, this, this knowledge you have, um, and, 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 and give it back to the society? Um, do you have a specific program on, on that, or do you do you uh, feel that everybody who is working at Telenet has to uh, contribute to that? Well, um, I think, firstly, uh, I believe that companies like ours, companies of scale, that that are successful and uh, are widely uh, used in in and some that are not widely used have a responsibility to mm -hmm. the stakeholders beyond profit. Mm -hmm. um, I think, fortunately, I think most of the sort of the classic capitalist world is moving in that direction. I think, you know, I always felt that um, throughout my whole career. And I think at Telenet, uh, it's been one of the core principles as well. But I think certainly, you know, the pandemic period and um, even before that, you know, we have been challenged by um, our employees, our, our customers, our regulators, um, and our shareholders who are now focusing on ESG and, yep. and want to know where we are on that and everything else. But also, more importantly, challenged by ourselves to, um, to be a more purposeful company that is engaged with its... Um, communities, with society at large, um, and is putting its assets to work in very specific ways that we can, we can make a difference in that maybe others can't. And by that I'm referring to, you know, the digital divide and, mm. and um, digital um, knowledge, um, you know, the things that we do in, um, in B2B. Um, uh, very successfully we have a bunch of uh, people that support uh, small businesses, and um, you know, our whole theme in in our in our t in TB and telling a business um, is we differentiate through the human touch. So mm -hmm. you know, through the pandemic, we've we've helped 
we've helped companies accelerate um, and improve their presence, um, you know, in e-commerce and and um, with various technologies. Security has become you know a real priority. So so we'll do that for for our customers. We'll do it for other people who are with other uh, suppliers as well. So, but the digital divide is 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 a substantial social mm -hmm. issue which came to light very much when um, when uh, homeschooling came in and mm -hmm. home working came in of course and then you realize you know okay you may have a broadband connection but you may have only one laptop in the house and you know four people that need it you know including the kids who need to do their schooling and people who need to look for jobs or hold on to jobs or or, or do whatever so um, a huge problem uh, at the front end of the pandemic. Mm. Um, so, so we've we've gotten behind um, several programs yep. to uh, to support um, not just the connectivity, and um, we have a program going on right now um, that uh, gets connectivity into needy homes for five euros a month. Mm. Um, it's not it's not something you're going to want to live on for forever, but it's it's going to it's enough to. To do schoolwork, it's enough to work. It's an, you know it'll support it'll support video connections and these kind of things. So um, we but we also made a commitment to um, to getting the hardware in homes and and laptops and uh, uh, through another uh, program. And as as Herod also mentioned, um, we're very supportive of several initiatives in in, in Brussels and Antwerp and uh, around um, training. Uh, workers in transition into into digital um, into digital focused yep. jobs so you know that's where that's where we can play that's where we can add the most value uh, and I think like I said all of our stakeholders you know want us to, to lift our game there yep. and uh, certainly our intention to continue to do so yeah I think of another initiative you did for the the, the small uh, companies like the the online essentials mm -hmm. uh, this was in fact, in the first place, you could have thought this is a commercial uh, thing, but you came up with it. With you were not yet. Sorry that I bring up this example, but it was in the COVID period, and mm -hmm. plenty of small business had to start working online, weren't equipped, didn't know how to do it. That was also one of of the initiatives, and and, and they even offered special rates or or, or for free or something. Uh, so. That, that's that's in fact using your strengths and your technology and your knowledge to help people out and and, and, and make sure that they can have a, a good living on the residential side, the mm -hmm. consumer, mm -hmm. but also on on the the business side. Huh? Yeah, I think you know when 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 you do you have an outreach to the community, it, it should be focused around your core capabilities, whatever company you you are and where where you can really bring uh, bring the value exponentially. You know, we could support, um, you know, healthcare or something, but we don't know anything about it. We'd have no capabilities there. So, so in the in the digital, bringing people up the up the curve digitally um, is is really where we try yeah. to do add value. Yeah. Education market, for instance, is very important. Also, eh? we mm -hmm. were in that market already for more than ten years, and uh, these are the the people of the future, of course, so all the kids that have been supported by, by Telenet and the, and the back end of Telenet, it's very important. And now we also launched a new initiative on that one, just to make more simplified offerings to that market, eh, because they, they are not like large companies no. or large en enterprises that are having the support of an IT department. So it's very important to help them out and, and guide them towards the new di digital uh, next level let's say yeah and when we're talking now about the digital next level um, we have quite some uh, technological people in our audience and therefore one question i i really wanted to ask is um w what do you think of the if you can share that uh, the evolution of the technology you will follow um, because you're using quite some technology and, and 5G is coming closer and, and there are other uh, challenges with, uh, with concerns technology. What is it that you say as, as, as Telenet guys, that is what we are believing in? Well, I don't think, I don't think any of us have really the choice. <laughs> but okay. we, you know, we've been talking about it. You know, Google had the 10 big things you know, yeah. years ago. We've been talking about 5G for years. We've been talking about cloud for years. We've been talking about edge computing for years. Yeah. I remember 
looking at a company about edge computing like seven years ago. Um, we've been when talking about you know various other AI. We've been talking about robotics. Mm -hmm. Where it's here, it's all happening. You know, it, it is really it's accelerating at pace. All of these things that that have been sort of hanging around the hoop for for quite some time. Um, so to some extent, um, we need to follow. We need to follow our customers, and yep. we need to really un understand what their priorities are. And you know, we we know that coming through the the pandemic period and what people are seeing on the news and everything, security is you know cybersecurity is is a massive um, need right now, both. Well, you know, mainly in the in the business market, but also in the consumer, in, mm -hmm. the, in people's households, you know, they're getting, you know, DDoSed and fished as well. So, um, so this is very important. Um, you know, going full IP. You know, getting getting old PABXs and things out of businesses and things <laughs> like that. That needs to happen quickly. Adoption um, of uh, of cloud, of course. Everybody needs, you know. Not only because the old way of doing things was clunky and isn't going to work anymore, but because there's real economics uh, in in and efficiencies in cloud and, and edge computing and, and and getting various platforms. Um, also, um, and this is something that we're looking at as a as an ICT um, user mm. is is AI and robotics. I mean, we're, we're really trying to um, software-defined networks. So these are all things that, that we're driving into our business. We're getting a lot of learnings from them, and then hopefully we're, we're also developing at the same time so that um, TB and the, and the team can, can support other businesses, um, but bis things that we have you know, real experience with. Mm. And then, of course, um, you know, 5G, that's, you know, that's probably the biggest thing that people have been talking about for years. And everybody's like, what is it, 5G? It's vaporware. You know, we've been talking about it forever. We never see it. The telcos are always whining about the fact that they have to spend hundreds of millions and they're never going to make any money on it, which yeah. kind of is true. But, um, you know, it's, it's a big challenge. We can't afford not to keep up. And we can't afford not to be in the vanguard. We can't afford not to, to adopt these technologies ourselves um, for a number of reasons and if if TB is going to continue to define itself in the marketplace and differentiate itself from certain others um, you know we need to we need to make these technologies accessible to business owners and business operators because you know what percent I don't know maybe you know but what percentage of companies in Flanders have a CIO. I don't know. It's pretty small, I bet. I think so too, yeah. Yeah, I the, mean. The uh, biggest, <laughs> and the biggest have a couple of thousand, seen. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. so we want to be, and we have 300,000 customers, we want to be the, the CIO for our customers. Yeah. Um, for our next customers. We want to make these, take the, take the mumbo jumbo out of the, the whole technology, next generation technology, because you got to go there. Yep. There's not w there's not one of those things that I mentioned that you can afford to just ignore completely. Yep. I mean, you can look at it and understand it and say, hey, it's not for me now, or I don't have the capital to invest in that, or whatever. But but you need to get to collaborative technologies quicker. You need to get to cybersecurity platforms, qu you know, really manage cybersecurity platforms yep. quicker. Um, and I think that COVID has just just moved that timetable up dramatically. So, um, so that's that's the role we want to play. We want to bring those technologies closer to the human capacity to understand, invest, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Now, this brings me also to uh, to Telenet business. Uh, I also have a question on that because, yeah, we're all companies, and um, the audience they're all people working in specific companies. Uh, a few CIOs might have joined tonight, mm -hmm. <laughs> so they will hear that uh, they're they exist. scarce. They yeah. exist, yes, they exist, they yes. Okay. Um, now, uh, if I'm right, uh, Telenet has started with residential and then afterwards started with business, right? 
That's and correct. That's correct. Yes. Huh? And then um, in, in the big, uh, I think there is a segmentation in the bigger and and the medium and the small. Mm -hmm. uh, and now you're also focusing on specific groups like um, uh, education or or th and, and then from sustainability point of view, the uh, people, the non-digital savvy people, perhaps, and 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 where there's still a problem with the digital divide. Um, what is your point of view? Uh, perhaps I'm a little bit too early to ask this question, but how do you see the future of uh, Telenet business? Well, I think John already indicated there, eh, there are yeah. lots of technologies yeah. coming out at us and um, what, what is uh, typically in the market that technology doesn't make it much more simpler eh, today. It's more complex cybersecurity as such standalone is already very complex yeah. and our customers are really saying that it, it should be much more simpler and more frictionless eh? mm -hmm. so rather than have someone on board uh, that capture it all we want to be the one that makes it more simple to understand and also to really adopt the new technologies because yeah. it's, it's opening up business opportunities of course it's creating more business new business but also leveraging upon well existing technologies transforming to new businesses etc so it's opening up uh, opportunities for the customers but they it's not that it's becoming much more easier today mm. Yeah, mm. The IT and telecom the converged stack yeah um, People are more adopted now eh, since COVID with, with uh, video conferencing and voice. But then again, you have the data, you have the yeah. uh, cloud solutions, etc. And yeah. at a certain moment, someone has to manage it yeah. all. So, and they don't have always the cap capabilities, yeah. especially in the, the complex domains like yeah. security. You could uh, develop a new solution named uh, John is coming as your CIO and help <laughs> you out. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can see the ad now. <laughs> yeah. we, um, we really need to think about uh, that branding then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think nobody would mistake me for a CIO. I can assure you. Yeah. But coming to that, when you when you are doing shopping, whatever, um, mm -hmm. you have an awful lot of customers. Uh, are there customers approaching you and saying, "Hey, John, I've got a question or a remark or whatever"? Or uh, um, yeah, I mean, I've been in the, in this business for uh, almost forty years now, and there was never a, a period in this business where people didn't want to talk about what we we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, f f uh, I find in Flanders, people are very polite and very modest and respectful, and they respect people's personal space. So I couldn't say that I, I get it all the time. But if I open the conversation, people want to talk about their broadband in their household mm -hmm. and where it doesn't work in their daughter's room and what's that all about and she's going to kill me. and. You know, so I get a, I get a lot of stories. Or you know, how come you don't have any good movies on? You know, like yeah, I hear yeah, that one a lot. Like that. It's like we have all the movies. <laughs> they just don't make good enough good movies. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, everybody, everybody, yeah. because you're using it 16 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, everybody's fair. You know, they're allowed to form an opinion and they're allowed to share it with me. So yeah. It's no big deal. But um, how do you see your, res well, it's not a responsibility, it's, it's in fact a partnership or a relation with the customer. Do you organize this also a little bit structured you s that you, you mention, okay, I want to see s so many customers a week or per month or? Well, before I get to that, I just something, just I remembered something, which is that at one point um, we train, we would train everyone in the company mm -hmm. who was willing to do it because mm -hmm. it was voluntary. Uh, about all the basics of how our hookups work and the modems work and the, t and the set top boxes and so everybody could because everybody's getting hit up by their their relatives and their in-laws and kids you know, and well the kids already know how to do it but um, better than we do so that you could help you know when the next time your you know your grandmother and grandfather say hey damn this telling it you know it's not working or you could say okay well we need a power line boosters to get you more signal back here or whatever so that was it was not just me it's important for everybody to um, to know that that you know outside of the walls of Telenet you know they're still Telenet and people are going to expect them to you know to have yeah. some answers so um, that's a very very nice initiative yeah. But we do we do uh, have outreach to uh, to our customers and clients, and we do an enormous amount of uh, research. And um, we we um, I mean we have 200 people working in our data organization, 
Um, and we, you know, our, our approach to the marketplace is what we call segment of one. Mm. So we're not relying on, you know, sort of age brackets or, you know, just usage behavior or anything. We, we see every customer uh, as a unique uh, experience, whether they're a business customer or they're a, a consumer. And we do have data that feeds into our CRM platform mm -hmm. um, that gives our agents next best action, uh, next best option capability so that they can steer them. Mm. An important decision that, that we made not that long ago, a couple of years ago, is that we're not just in the business of trying to sell more stuff to more people. We're in the business of right-sizing mm -hmm. our relationship with our customers yep. and ensuring they're not getting too much stuff or look, it, you know, or, or paying for, for too many things uh, that they're not using. And so, you know, we may have contact with a customer and we say, we might say, hey, by the way, I'm just looking at your account and you haven't used this thing and, you know, I can save you yep. 20 euros a month. Yep. So we're, we're, we want to have that kind of relationship. That's what we mean by segment of one. Every customer is unique. They have a unique set of uh, services from us and the way they use it is unique. And, um, you know, we have to respect that and, mm -hmm. and understand it to, to the degree that we can, you know, with and under, you know, uh, data privacy and everything of else. Course. So, of course, we respect all that stuff. But still, um, you know, we really try to, mm -hmm. to approach our customers that way. I have, um, I think, one of my last questions before we go over to the questions of the audience Kay. is uh, it's about um, the um, reputation of uh, Telenet as a brand. And the brand is very valuable, I think. Uh, that you, I think mm -hmm. you are very... Uh, much res doing research on that but the reputation is much more than a brand mm -hmm. and um, I, I heard that there are some companies that even invite their reputation management manager when they have investor calls and that they get regularly they get uh, a lot of questions on this reputation is that uh, the case at the at Telenet? Yeah I mean I look one of the reasons I came to work here is mm -hmm. is the research that I did on uh, on Telenet as a brand and the unique uh, brand equity that the company enjoyed and the, and the culture and and you know it to me it's, and I you know some of the other companies in our industry are certainly not well loved I mean and, and you know Telenet has one of the highest NPS's of any company that does what we do in Europe mm. but it's still not very good compared to you know Netflix or this or that yeah. where people you know just uh, love and adore so we can always do better. But it is a pretty special situation here, given the fact that we d grew out of the intercommunals. And, and so people in Flanders feel a sense of ownership of Telenet almost. Like, you know, you're us. You, you're, you're an extension of us. And that's a big responsibility. You know, you helped us tame Proximus because in 1995, we had to wait three months to get a phone line installed. <laughs> now they're doing a much better job now, but you know, that uh, only through, you know, 25 years of, of really focused and serious competition. Um, we, we have uh, a very, very valued person and um, she's has a quite a small team who, who focus on the brand and reputation and mm -hmm. our, our way we reach the community, Inika. And yes, she sits in on um, on calls with with shareholders um, and we when we do a cap our next capital markets day we will have an, an ESG uh, mm -hmm. component we will have a, a dedicated period to ESG um, which you know she will she will organize and and lead uh, with me so it is it's a unique uh, privilege to have that um, it's a unique opportunity it's why you know, we have a, you know, around 60% share of, in the consumer market of mm -hmm. broadband. Um, most challengers, you know, are between 30 and 40% share. But this is, this is why, um, this is why we do. It's the, it's the reputation of the company. I mean, that's, we're, we're going to double down on that going forward. You know, our, our sort of mantra is, you know, we're going to have, we're going to have the best fixed network, the best wireless network. We're going to have a fr frictionless and, and, and intimate customer relationship. Um, and we, we want customers for life. Mm -hmm. 
and w we don't want to give people any reason to to consider you know other alternatives mm -hmm. um, and to do that we have to be people have to believe about our brand that that they're safe with our brand mm -hmm. that we're not going to let them down if there's a problem and that if there is a technological advancement that we're going to be ahead of the game they're not going to get left behind in any way shape or form if they stay with telling it and they go on this journey with us and um, you know that's that's our ambition it's not just about the next transaction or the next you know whatever mm. it's a it's a lifetime relationship great mm. thank you very much sure I, re I really enjoyed it as as promised you, pr <laughs> you you made up your promises too because we enjoyed very much yeah um, we have some questions coming from uh, the audience mm -hmm. Um, and the first one is, is more like, and therefore I uh, hesitated to ask you questions regarding uh, mm -hmm. the, the revenues and, the okay. and all these stuff. So the first question is your view on your revenue in wholesale mm -hmm. by um, a global telco. Yeah, well, uh, you know, incumbents like Proximus or KPN or France Telecom have had to open their networks, um, you know, a long time ago yeah um, and uh, c most cable companies still don't have open networks telenet's network ha has been open for six years yeah. with um, and, and has been accessed by orange our wireless network is open uh, we have somewhere around 12 or 15 MVNOs uh, using our infrastructure yeah. I think the future is is definitely open networks and you know we we believe that um, for the network to keep up with technology for the level of capital investment required you know with this this migration to fiber which you know is going to happen but it's going to happen over a long period of time and by the way the one gig network is pretty darn good it's as good as any fiber that's out there today um, and you know we we need to let people use our network and have a wholesale relationship with them we because of your last question brand and reputation mm -hmm. we back ourselves to have our competitors sitting on our network mm -hmm. we're not we're not that doesn't give us heartburn we actually like the wholesale business it's a good business we like to do more of it mm -hmm. so if anybody wants to jump on our network no I, and I think for example 5g 5g is going to be built around uh, around a shared Uh, spectrum you know s uh, you know whether active or passive sharing is, is going to be is going to happen on fiber it's going to happen on 5g the whole next generation of, of technologies in telecom are, are going to be about open uh, networks and platforms yeah yeah um, I've got a question and it, it's been a while but uh, now I see it again uh, what's the future of IOT we have been talking a lot about that the last years but now it was a little bit quieter but what about IOT what about smart cities um, how do you work on that well IOT is another one of those things that it's been people have been talking about for a long long time mm -hmm. and uh, the question is is you know well first of all what is IOT I think is a is an important question and, and in what verticals can it mm. you know really uh, be successful um, it's it's something that I think in there's a very narrow definition of IOT which is smart you know it was just devices connected to you know kind of low power mm. and and not particularly fast data but you know um, to some kind of hub and then back to the network. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, that we're still, we're still a little bit away from having a standard there, uh, which is really what has slowed down IoT. There's too many bespoke IoT solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the opportunity there will really accelerate um, when we get those standards and when we industrialize IOT, you know, around standards and around, you know, standards for hardware, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So, yeah. And what was the other part? Was IOT and... And the smart cities? Smart cities, um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen what the art of the possible is in, s in smart cities. Um, 
you know, in Singapore and, and Seoul and, you know, God knows how many million cameras in London or whatever the case may be. And, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of work to do there, too. I mm. mean, I don't think the technology is, is the, is, is the hold back, holding back factor of, of smart cities. I think there's a lot of things we could be doing today. Mm. I think cities need to decide they're going to allocate capital toward that. Um, and that that's going to be just as important as roads and sewers and, you know, the stuff they do love to sp yeah. spend their money on, as we can see in, in Antwerp, uh, anyway, and Brussels. Um, so, yeah, it's really, the technology is available to really accelerate uh, smart cities today. And we're, we've got a number of installations, um, certainly, you know, with Macklin and, and in Brussels and, mm -hmm. and, and elsewhere, but and and a bit in Antwerp, but there's there's a lot more that could be done. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a last question, mm -hmm. and that is something completely different, and that is what what makes you happy? <laughs> what makes me happy? Um, well, it's a uh, it's a good question. It's something that my wife's been asking me uh, quite a bit lately. So. Uh, um, it's, look, I have um, a real passion for what I'm doing right now. So in my, in my professional life, it's about, it's about helping people be successful, mm -hmm. whether it's our customers or employees or whatever. It's about creating a, a common uh, uh, idea of what success looks like and what the future can bring. Yep. And for people to feel like that they're a part of it and they're, they're going to be successful and that they can grow. And we have a lot of young people that work in this business. And so, so seeing young people grow and, and go on to, to great things. I have, um, in my career, well, in my career I've had, you know, several people that have bigger jobs than I have right now who have come from somewhere else and, and um, you know, I, and um, quite a few of them women actually. So a woman I hired in 1997 now runs all of Comcast, which includes Sky and everything outside of the United States and okay. lives in London. And I have a woman who I hired to do um, in my production company in, in Australia um, that just produced the largest grossing movie in Australia since Crocodile Dundee called The Dry. I highly recommend it. It's <laughs> um, so it's, and it's on streaming services right now. But seeing people be successful and is in, in my professional life and having fun doing it is what makes me happy. And in my personal life, I, I, I knock on wood, you know, I have four brilliant adult children who, and I have my first grandchild in uh, June 14th. So. Whoa. So there's plenty of good things going on in the world. Yep. I mean, I am, I am an incurable optimist. Mm. I need to have like really grim CFOs to keep my feet on the ground, you know? And uh, I, you know, I just believe that if we get, um, you know, we all link arms and we have a, a shared belief in the, in the future that, that, you know, pretty much anything we set our minds to, we can accomplish. Yeah. Well, I, in the meantime, I received another last question. Okay. And uh, no. uh, somebody said, you learn Dutch, so can you share some famous Flemish proverbs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is moeilijk for me. Yeah. I can, uh, uh, I think that, uh, uh, no, I remember nothing. Uh, uh, Verschilmaker, eh? Verschilmaker, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, that's, that's something we use internally. Normally I can, I will, and I buy, uh, Martine Temples is, is the queen of Flemish proverbs and has taught me so many, um, but I'm just having a mental block right now. No problem, no problem. We will come back. Brain for fog. <laughs> COVID, COVID brain. <laughs> Anyway, many, many thanks. I keep um, well in mind that uh, the transformation was uh, very important for you, for the company, for the culture and everything. And yeah. uh, that uh, entertainment has become a, a pretty important part of uh, what you are doing here in uh, at Telenet. 
uh, purpose is also about partnerships. Yeah, yeah definitely about partnerships and, yeah. and partnerships with previous competitors as well. I mean, yeah. I think it's really yeah. about it's open. It's very wide. Yeah, huh? very broad definition. Um, technology, technology, you want to be a forerunner? Can I say that? Yes, yeah. definitely. That's, that's I mean, a very important we point. Wanna, we want to bring, bring people along with us too. Yeah. We have a role to play there. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, many, many thanks for your time and for your hospitality. Thank you to you too, here. Thank you, Marina. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Um, I would like to say a word to the audience because after this uh, session today, we mm. still have one to go before the summer, and that's yeah. the 28th of June. Um, we will have an event on online tips and tricks regarding digital overload and how to deal with it. So I'll I tune think in for that one. Yeah. So we will <laughs> send you the link. <laughs> And you can send your questions ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, and then by end of June, we will, uh, we will make the uh, calendar for the uh, rest of the year public. Uh, but we can already announce the 8th of, of September. We start again with online network at noon. That's a regular session, but everything is uh, published on the internet. And on the 16th of September, that's in, in fact uh, a little bit the same format, uh, so it's an inspiring session with the CEO. Michel Hallet is the CEO of Partena Professional. And he will open up, but very important, and the main difference with today, it will be live. So oh, yeah. we hope with English everybody world. in the world that <laughs> the indicators stay positive, and then on the 16th of September we will go live. And that is what uh, we have to announce today. So many thanks to everybody, to the participants, to, the, to you too, and to Telenet as a whole. Dank u wel. En tot het volgende event. Prettige avond. Dank u wel, Marine.